Have you ever had an image and really liked it, but couldn't manage to find a better version than this? How cool would it be if you could take this image and make it look twice as good? It would be great. But what if I could make it even 4 or 8 times more high definition? Now we are talking. Just look at that. Here, we enhance the resolution of the image by a factor of 4, meaning that we have 4 times more height and width pixels for more details, making it look a lot smoother. The best thing is that this is done within a few seconds, completely automatically, and works with pretty much any image. Oh, and you can even use it yourself with a demo they made available, as we will see during the video. Speaking of enhancing resolution, I'm always looking to enhance different aspects of how I work and share what I make. If you're working on machine learning problems, there's no better way to enhance your workflows than with this episode's sponsor, Weights and Biases. Weights and Biases is a ML Ops platform where you can keep track of your machine learning experiments, insights, and ideas. A feature I especially love is how you can quickly create and share amazing looking interactive reports like this one, clearly showing your team or future self your runs matrix, hyperparameters, and data configurations alongside any notes you had at the time. Capturing and sharing your work is essential if you want to grow as an ML practitioner, which is why I highly recommend using tools that improve your work like weights and biases. Just try it with the first link below, and I will owe you an apology if you haven't been promoted within a year. Before getting into this amazing model, we have to first introduce the concept of photo of sampling or image super resolution. The goal here is to construct a high resolution image from a corresponding low resolution input image, which is a face in this case, but it can be any object, animal or landscape. The low resolution will be such as 512 pixels or smaller, not that blurry, but it's clearly not high definition when you have it full screen. Just take a second to put the video on full screen and you'll see the artifacts. While we are at it, you should also take a few more seconds to like the video and send it to a friend or two. I'm convinced they will love this and will thank you for it. Anyway, we take this low definition image and transform it into a high definition image with a much clearer face. In this case, a 2048 pixel square image, which is 4 times more HD. To achieve that, we usually have a typical UNet-like architecture with convolutional neural networks which I covered in many videos before, like the one appearing on the top right corner of your screen if you'd like to learn more about how they work. The main downside is that CNNs have difficulty adapting to extremely broad datasets since they have the same kernels for all images, which makes them great for local results and generalization, but less powerful for the overall results when we want the best results for each individual image. On the other hand, transformers are a promising architecture due to the self-attention mechanism capturing global interactions between contexts for each image, but have heavy computations that are not suitable for images. Here, instead of using CNNs or transformers, they created the same unit-like architecture with both convolution and attention mechanisms, or more precisely, using the SWIN transformer architecture. The SWIN transformer is amazing since it has both the advantages of the CNNs to process images of larger sizes and prepare them for the attention mechanisms. And these attention mechanisms will create long-range connections so that the model understands the overall image much better and can also recreate the same image in a better way. I won't enter into the details of the SWIN transformer as I already covered this architecture a few months ago and explain its difference with CNNs and classical transformer architectures used in natural language processing. If you'd like to learn more about it and how the researchers applied transformers to vision, check out the video and come back for the explanation of this upsampling model. The model is called SWIN IR and can do many tasks, which include image upsampling. As I said, it uses convolutions to allow for bigger images. More precisely, they use a convolutional layer to reduce the size of the image, which you can see here. This reduced image is then sent into the model and also passed directly to the reconstruction module to give the model general information about the image, as we will see in a few seconds. This representation will basically look like many weird blurry versions of the image, giving valuable information to the upscaling module and how the overall image should look like. Then, we see the SWIN transformer layers coupled with convolutions. This is to compress the image further and always extract more valuable precise information about both the style and details while forgetting about the overall image. This is why we then add the convoluted image to give the overall information we lack with a skip connection. All of this is finally sent into a reconstruction module called Subpixel, 
which looks like this, and uses both the larger general features and smaller detailed features we just created to reconstruct a higher definition image. You can see this as a convolutional neural network but in reverse, or simply a decoder, taking the condensed features we have and reconstructing a bigger image from it. Again, if you'd like to learn more about CNNs and decoders, you should check some of the videos I made covering them. So you basically send your image in a convolutional layer, take this new representation, save it for later, while also sending it in the SWIN transformer architecture to condense the information further and learn the most important features to reconstruct. Then, you take these new features with the saved ones and use a decoder to reconstruct the high definition version. And voila! Now, you only need enough data and you will have results like this. Of course, as with all research, there are some limitations. In this case, probably due to the initial convolutional layer, it doesn't work really well with very small images under 200 pixels wide. You may see artifacts and weird results like this one appear. It seems like you can also remove wrinkles using the bigger upscalers, which can be a useful artifact if you are looking to do that. Other than that, the results are pretty crazy, and for having played with it a lot in the past few days, the 4x upscaling is incredible. And you can play with it too. They made the GitHub repo available for everyone with pre-trained models, and even a demo you can play with right away without any code. Of course, this was just an overview of this amazing new model, and I will strongly invite you to read their paper for a deeper technical understanding. Everything is linked in the description. Let me know what you think, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you once again Weights and Biases for sponsoring this video, and to anyone still watching. See you next week with another exciting paper.